What's the first thing that comes to mind when someone says, Oh, I met a Jewish man today? Perhaps your mind might automatically picture a mid-height, pale white, dark-haired fellow. You may tend to associate Jews with white culture, as the most well-known Jewish celebrities are Scarlett Johansson, Woody Allen, and Rashida Jones. But is it true that all Jewish people have a white origin and are descendants of European immigrants in America? To answer this question, we will have to travel back in time, almost 4,000 years from now, to understand the actual history of black Jews. Israel is the first Jewish state that came into being after two millennia after a long conflict in 1948. Whether we're talking about European, Ethiopian, Yemenite, Indian, Asian or Turkish Jews, the story of the ethnological and racial diversity of the Jewish people goes back millennia. The story of black Jews in America doesn't begin so long ago. It started 400 to 500 years back. The Kingdom of Israel is relatively new, and prior to that, Jewish people moved throughout the world for thousands of years, which led to the diversification of Jewish culture and look. So you can't say that Jewish people have a certain look. As mentioned earlier, Israel came into being in 1948, but its origin traces back to some 4,000 years ago, as mentioned by the Bible. Some 2,000 years ago, Jewish people got scattered due to economic disruption and their mobility didn't stop yet. Spain, Iran, Iraq, and other parts of Africa had Jewish populations for hundreds of years. In the late 15th century, the Spanish government passed a law that forced Jews to become Catholic. Due to this law, a major portion of the Jewish population migrated to the New World, and Jewish communities began developing there. After the colonies started expanding, people from European countries started coming to America. Not a long time after that, communities of black Jewish people started becoming common when European colonizers began sending African slaves to the New World. Scholars say that the first black Jews in America were the African Jewish people who were sent as slaves to the New World. Slave Ownership of Jews Over time, slave ownership became more common throughout the 1500s and 1600s, and the slaves eventually started following the faith of the homes they were enslaved in. This action was either done by force or by choice of slaves. Most people became Christians through this practice, but some of them converted to Judaism. Over time, most of these slaves of the Jewish faith or their descendants were sold to slave owners in the United States. A few records suggest that some of these slaves retained their identity and religious beliefs. Whether Jewish or not, black slaves felt a strong connection with the Israelites of the Bible, who were rescued from slavery in Egypt and chosen by God for a unique destiny. Scholars say that there is a strong connection between biblical Israelites and modern-day black people. A verse from Psalms strengthens this connection too. Millions of black people from America moved to northern states during the Great Migration of the 20th century to find better opportunities and escape from the racist and oppressive Jim Crow laws. These laws enforced racial segregation in the southern United States. Around the 1920s, black leaders founded Jewish-inspired African-American groups for a few people. This practice was considered a way to join mainstream Judaism through conversion. In the following decades, these conversions became more popular among the black people of North America. Many high-profile conversions happened during that time, one of them being the most popular Sammy Davis Jr. His parents were born Christians, and so Davis was also a born Christian. He started his journey toward Judaism after encountering a car accident in 1954. Davis got to know about the similarities between black culture and Jewish people through his friend, comedian, Eddie Cantor, which made him study the subject more and convert eventually. Another significant convert was the social rights activist Charles McDew, who converted to Judaism in high school after getting inspired by the quote, If I am only for myself, what am I? If not now, when? He got influenced by this quote, and it made him fight for civil rights in the decades to come. Such well-known conversions made the notion of every black Jew being a convert, while in reality this holds no truth. A lot of people, especially today, are not converts. Interracial marriages were very uncommon and illegal in the United States. In 1967, the Supreme Court passed the ruling making interracial marriages legal across the US. A large number of these marriages were between Jewish and black people. The Jewish population increased notably in the latter half of the 20th century. 
Some of them were born Jewish, and some were the ones who were adopted into Jewish families, while others were converts. The African Jews African Jews have lived in the Americas since colonial times. Before the 1820s, it was the largest community of Jews in the Caribbean, and the largest Jewish community with ancestral ties to Africa. Early African American Jews migrated to the United States from Jamaica and Barbados. Portraits of Isaac Lopez Brandon and Sarah Brandon Moses, slaves born in Barbados, are the earliest known paintings of African Jews. Both Caribbean Jews became members of white Jewish synagogues in the United States and helped form an early African American synagogue in Harlem in the first half of the 20th century. Several historic Jewish congregations in the United States mention early African American worshippers. Lucy Marks, who lived and worked with the Marks family in Philadelphia, was known as a devout observer of Jewish law and sat in the women's section of Israel's mikveh during services. After his death, Marx's family successfully requested that he be buried at Spruce Street Cemetery. Billy Simmons attended Beth Elohim in Charleston, South Carolina, whose constitution barred African Americans from membership. At least eight African Americans led Jewish religious groups in the first few decades of the 20th century. Most connections have been traced to the Caribbean or Ethiopia. Today, African American Jews worship in both predominantly African American synagogues and predominantly mixed congregations. The tapestry of Jews increasing significantly after the approval of interracial marriage by the Supreme Court was on display in December 1993 at a symposium at the California African American Museum entitled Where Worlds Collide The Souls of African American Jews. Shortly thereafter, Black and multiracial Jews began forming organizations to support their particular concerns, issues, and Jewish heritage. In 1995, Robin Washington founded the National Conference of Black Jews. Around the year 2000, Bechol Lashon was founded to support Jewish interracial families. Around the same time, Yavila McCoy, a black Orthodox diversity educator and consultant, started the Ayecha Resource Organization to provide support and resources for a multidimensional Jewish identity. Multiracial Jewish Organizations Other multiracial Jewish organizations include Jews in All Hues, founded in 2009 by Jared Jackson. The Jews of Color Initiative was founded in 2016, and Joyous Justice was founded by April N. Baskin that same year. The work of individuals and organizations like these and others have helped Jews and non-Jews alike appreciate the extent to which the Jewish people are a multiracial community. This shift has been aided in no small part by the fame of notable and talented black Jewish performers and pop culture. Actors such as David Diggs, Tiffany Haddish and Rashida Jones have become household names. Drake, Yitz Jordan, aka Why Love and Shine, once known as Jamal Barrow but now Moses Levi Barrow, Lenny Kravitz and Nissim Black have all had success in the music industry. However, as much as black Jews have become accepted in popular culture, race relations in America have remained complicated, especially in the realm of identity politics. When supporters of the Black Lives Matter movement engaged in protests beginning in 2016, many black Jews, rabbis, and rabbinical students joined them in protests, reading from the Book of Lamentations, blowing the shofar, and reciting the mourners' Kaddish. However, as individuals and leaders within the BLM movement have spoken in opposition to Israel and Zionism, with a few groups going so far as to exclude Jewish organizations and participants, many black Jews find themselves in a difficult situation where aspects of their identity seem in conflict, a dilemma between race and their religious and cultural identity. Today, black, Latino, Asian, Mizrahi, and other non-white Jews make up 20% of the American Jewish population. This group is often referred to as Jews of color, though the term is contested. Jews of color is a term used for Jews who originate from African, Asian, or Latin American countries. Jewish Minorities Despite growing awareness within the Jewish community, many Jews of color continue to feel that Jewish individuals and organizations treat them as others, requiring them to explain and justify their existence and fight biases within their community especially in this cultural moment where racial awareness is in high focus. 
The American Jewish community includes Jews of African American descent. African American Jews belong to each of the major denominations of American Judaism, such as Orthodox, Conservative, and Reform, as well as smaller movements, such as Retro-Constructionists and Philanthropists. Like their Jewish counterparts, African American Jewish secularists and African American Jews may participate in little or no religious practice. American journalist and filmmaker Robin Washington became one of the three founders of the National Congress of Negro Jews, later called the Union of Negro Jews. This initiative was devised to build bridges between all African American Jews who belong to different groups. Estimates of the number of black Jews in the United States range from 20,000 to 200,000. There are several predominantly African American synagogues in the United States, such as the Ethiopian Hebrew Congregation, Beth Shalom Benai Zaken, a synagogue in Chicago, Illinois. The leader of Congregation Beth Shalom is Rabbi Kepers Fonier. His assistant rabbis are Abraham Ben Israel and Joshua V. Salter. The congregation, which has about 200 members, is mostly African American. The congregation was started in 1918 by Rabbi Horace Hassan of Bombay, India, as the Ethiopian Hebrew Settlement Workers Association, and was influenced by Arthur Matthews' Wentworth Edict. Racial boundaries are often fluid because race is a social construct, a powerful idea created by humans rather than a biological reality. As of 2013, 94% of US Jews are white. However, Jewish racial identity has transformed many times in US history. In 19th century America, Jews were generally a distinct race within the vast white class. Jews who wanted to preserve their traditions called themselves racially Jewish and white. At the time, this was a common way to watch matches. Immigrant groups such as Germans, Irish, and Jews were considered different races but all could still be considered white. While some of these groups, such as the Irish, struggled to fit into white society, sometimes grouped with African Americans, 19th century Jews constituted the majority in the United States. They were thought to be only a subgroup of the Caucasian population. In the early 20th century, as the industrialization of the United States increased, immigration and the spread of Nazism from Europe, many Americans became nativists, lest the new immigrants, who were often poorer than in the 19th century, be seen as white. Jews were called non-white and a lot of people called Jews black. For example, in 1910, Professor Arthur Abernathy argued that Jews and Africans were racially identical. He published a book that compared racist stereotypes of black physical and social characteristics to Jewish stereotypes to show that Jews are black. Similar considerations have led some universities, such as Harvard and New York, to establish racial quotas that exclude Jews from white universities. Jews, as well as black Americans, were targeted by the Jim Crow rules in the South. In 1912, in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, a Jewish immigrant was threatened with lynching after onlookers saw a white woman walking with a black man. Between 1913 and 1915, these issues received national attention in the trial of Leo Frank, a Jew accused of sexually assaulting and murdering a white girl in Atlanta. A white Georgian compared Frank's Jewish racial identity to racist stereotypes of African Americans, and the jury convicted Frank. The governor of Georgia commuted his sentence, but a few days later, a white mob lynched Frank. Anti-Semitic propaganda sponsored by such popular figures as automaker Henry Ford and Catholic radio priest Father Coughlin also proliferated during these years. In the 21st century, most people think that Jews are white. Well, maybe a large portion of the Jewish population is white, but not all Jewish people are white. Although Jews have struggled through decades to make themselves part of the white community still, the stigma around black Jewish people should die now. If you are a history lover, you will probably like our other videos, so click here to see that.